Hello everyone. In today's session, we will see how cross-company postings are done in SAP. Before that, let's understand what are cross-company postings or transactions. When we have two or more companies, uh, they may have separate legal entities, but are affiliated with each other in one or the other way. Example, uh, they are subsidiaries companies or part of same corporate group. Uh, some examples are a company who share their expenses or one company is uh, paying expenses for other company or there is a transfer of asset. So in such scenarios, cross company transactions come into existence. Let's take a scenario and understand everything in a proper way, how it is done in SAP. So in my, in my case or in my scenario, uh, expense of one company is paid by another. So I have two companies. One is Indian company and the other one is US company. Uh, they are same in uh, all respect. They are part of same corporate group. So uh, the expense of this 1812 company uh, is borne by or paid by company two, that is 2405. So in normal situation, uh, what a journal entry would look like, if my vendor or the expense uh, was from this 1812 company, then my normal journal entry would be rent expense debit to vendor. But now as the expense of 1812 is paid by my company that is situated in US, uh, there would be a temporary account will come into existence. So what that temporary account, that would be an intercompany transaction account that will come into existence. So in 1812 company uh, who is who has expense, the entry in this company would be rent expense to intercompany payable account would be debited in this case. While in my company two, that is 2405, an intercompany receivable account would be debited and vendor account would be payable. Now in SAP, what we need to do, first we need to have a master data or we need to have GL account for intercompany transactions in both the companies. So let's create a GL account for intercompany transactions by transaction code FS00. So I'm maintaining two companies. Uh, right now my 1812 company has opened in SAP. In my account payable, I have already created an intercompany payable trans payable account. And in my account receivable, I have already uh, I have already created intercompany receivable accounts. So as uh, it is a payable account, it is a balance sheet item under uh, the group account payable, then in control data as uh, 1812 is my Indian co company, uh, the currency account currency is INR. Right now I am not um, taking taxes in consideration. So I have not, uh, I have marked a posting without tax allowed. Then definitely it would be my open item management account. And the field status group I have opted for is G001 in this case. The posting automatically only this option is being opted as uh, that we'll see uh, uh, while we are actually linking the accounts. Similarly, I have opened an intercompany receivable account. So the description as uh, this is a receivable or an asset account, uh, the account group is account receivable. Also, it is a balance sheet account. So the GL type is balance sheet account. The account currency is INR. I have opened in 1812. That is an Indian company. 
then i have not allowed a uh, tax postings in it it is an open item managed account and my field status group is g001 and post automatically only is checked Similarly, I have to create a payable and receivable account, intercompany payable and receivable account in 2405, the com the, my other company. So similarly, I have opened 2405. In this, I have already maintained my intercompany payable and receivable account. All the configurations are same. A very simple thing we need to do in order to conclude uh, the configurations in this case is uh, by, sorry, the transaction code is OBYA, not OBYC. Uh, so the company code clearing. So my company code number one is 1812 and my other company is 2405. Now here, the clearing between company codes, under this configuration, what we do, uh, we link our receivable and payable account for both the companies. So in, in my case, company code is 1812 and my cleared against 2405, the other companies 2405. The receivable, I have to enter the debit account and also uh, mention the posting key uh, that I will be using in order to do, to do the journal entries. So the debit posting key would be 40 and my account is 351. And similarly, my credit is 50 and my credit account is 303. And in same way, uh, in 2405, my posting key is 40 and my account is 351. Now the accounts are same in my case because the chart of account I have assigned to both the companies are same. So that is why the account number or uh, the GL account number is same in both the cases is because of my, my, because the chart of account I have assigned to both the companies are same. Now let's post one entry uh, and see how the transaction will look like. So uh, this is my vendor entry. I will directly enter T code F-43. So let's see the example again. My 1812 company, that is an Indian company, and I have to book rent in this company, while I have to book vendor in the other company, that is 2405. So here my journal entry would be very simple. The entry would be rent account debit with the amount, but this rent would be debited in 1812 company. And uh, my winter account would be credited. And this would be in my 2405 company. Right? So let's do a journal entry. Uh, now, this is my vendor invoice, so I have to enter a vendor data first. My company would be 2405. And as this company is US based, the currency would be USD. Reference rent invoice. Now, posting key is 31, that is for my vendor, and let's Enter the account details. I'm maintaining one vendor here. Let's
let's assume the amount is hundred dollars i'm changing the payment term to i'm changing the payment term to this payable immediately due net so now the debit line item would be my expense account uh, and the expense account that I will debit in the company code 1812. Now the amount would be same in dollars. So now uh, we have two options. We can put an amount in INR as well, but I have updated uh, the exchange rate. So let's see how the amount automatically uh, uh, will get calculated in this case. So the in USD, I'm putting $100. So the cost center, I have to assign the cost center as well. Now the cost center, uh, will be related to my 1812 company. Rent, I have assigned my cost center. Let's simulate this entry and see how it will look. So now automatically, uh, without entering the intercompany receivable and payable, automatically uh, system have uh, fetched the data and uh, uh, created one journal entry let's post it so the two entries uh, shall get get posted in the companies one in company 1812 and the other in company 2405 i'm saving posting the entry and uh, see two document number generated in 2405 document number 5004 generated while in 1812, uh, a document starting with 1900 generated. So let's continue. Uh, now let's see how uh, my entry has reflected. Let's see the transaction. For that, uh, let's go into report with the transaction FBL3N, we'll see our GL account. So the GL account that got, that got reflected is our rental account. So the expense we have booked in 1812 and my GL account number is one. This last entry, 7,500 rupees is reflecting because I have entered a 100 USD dollar amount and I have actually given my exchange rate as 75. I'll show that to you. But before that, uh, let's see a transaction in our company, uh, 2505, 2405, how it is reflected in its GL account. So for that, we need to see the vendor account through T code FBL 1N. We can go and see the ledger or vendor line item display. So my company code here is 2405 and my vendor account. I don't remember my vendor account. Let's find it out. Okay, my company code here is 1812. I have to change it to 2405. Execute. See, a $100 entry is posted in my company 2405. That is California based. While the expense is in 1812. 
by entry 7500 rupees that means i have uh, assigned 75 rupee as my um, exchange rate i will also show you how uh, system has picked this 75 rupees through the transaction OB08. In USD, I have assigned a direct quote. So the latest entry entry under M is uh, one USD is equals to seventy five uh, rupee. So that's how it uh, automatically uh, considered 75 rupees for conversion. So this was a very simple case or a very simple scenario. And uh, this is how the cross company transactions takes place under SAP. So that's all for today. Thank you all for listening. Have a really good day.